each city we went to, they heard rumors about the city beforehand. Um, so then people had expectations by the time we got to the next city, you know, because they heard how hard we were training, you know, so they wanted to see the show. They heard about, you know, what nice guys we are, because yes, we are. <laughs> And then uh, we met up with uh, Mr. Bean. Um, he owns the oldest gym in China. Um, so uh, we took a trip uh, from the restaurant out to his gym to check this out. Um, yeah, this place was hardcore for sure. Um, it was like a Metroflex gym, but um, several stories of a Metroflex gym. It had that hardcore rough um, brick uh, feel to it. Um, but uh, the equipment that was in it was made by him himself. Um, so it was interesting how it all was set up uh, to where um, it was very functional. And, you know, he got down and showed to demonstrate, you know, how the equipment worked. He, had, uh, he made most equipment himself. And uh, I think he, he took the time and I think showed us and demonstrated every piece of equipment that he built and had in the gym and some of the stuff, you know, dated back to the original days. So, uh... Hello. Yes. Uh, yeah. so, you guys, <laughs> so you guys see, Mr. Bien has all, you know, Mr. Olympia yeah. on the wall yeah. to motivate uh, the trainers to uh, train harder uh, in his gym, in this hardcore, you know, environment. of a hardcore gym um, you know had a had a very low following a lot of you know good athletes there and because of guys like that that's why bodybuilding is what it is it doesn't there's guys like that in Texas guys like that in France UK Russia wherever guys like Mr. Bean that's what produces the champions those kind of gyms so it was a good experience and a pretty cool place to, to be inside and and experience and um, not the only experience but really um, to get the history of all the places we went to, that's the one I would have liked to have trained at. I think we could have gotten a really good workout there, uh, the right kind, of, right atmosphere, right kind of equipment. You know, th those places are hard to come by, especially this day and time. And it doesn't matter if it's a MMA champion, a boxer, a bodybuilder, a powerlifter. Those old school, old school hardcore gyms. That's where the true champions come from. <laughs> Yeah, when we were headed out to uh, China, you know, one of the things was like we were going to experience the local cuisine. I, I knew that going into it. I knew the Chinese diet is very different than what our bodybuilding diet is. And if you're a bodybuilder, it doesn't matter where you're from, we all eat basically the same stuff. Uh, it's a kind of a basic set plan that we all use and uh, we you tailor it to the individual and what your goal is, but um, it's a kind of a set plan if you're a bodybuilder. So going there, I knew it's going to be a little bit of a challenge, but um, you know, the first day we went, they took us to a restaurant way outside of Beijing in the country. And uh, I was, we were driving through the woods. We pulled up on this place and uh, you know, didn't look like a restaurant. Had dogs running around everywhere. I said dogs running around inside the restaurant. And uh, they brought this stuff out. And for a minute, I thought it was a dog. That alone had me a little bit worried because me, myself, I'm a real picky eater. And all of us are really creatures of habit, but I have to say there are some people that don't mind experimenting and trying other foods. Well, I'm not that person. How it smells. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, it actually was a lamb. 
and uh, they had a lot of traditional Chinese food there. And traditional Chinese food, guys, we're talking like, when you order chicken, you get like a chicken head, some chicken feet, some chicken guts, and there ain't no chicken breast. I don't know what they do with the chicken breast. It took us a while to figure that out, but uh, it was definitely different. So, uh, you know, we did that, you know, for the first couple days, and then, you know, I, you know, me and Johnny finally had to speak up. We're like, guys, we're bodybuilders. Number one, we're not getting enough food. Number two, we're not getting the right kind of food, you know? We still got to bodybuild and do what we do. You know, I like my comfort food, the food I like to eat, and pretty much that's it. And I think I, my body is pretty much, you know, uh, adapted to that, and that's it. And once I venture out of there, um, it's never a really good experience anyway, but you know, going to a different country and experiencing their cuisine um, was quite a bit of an experience. Yes, please, regular food. At least once this trip, I'm getting skinny. Experiencing lamb we had, um, you know, um, didn't go well. Um, by the time we got halfway through the ride, going to the hotel, I had to have him pull over and uh, so I could dump all the lamb up out of me. Um, <laughs> and not the way I wanted to either. After that, you know, we shifted more to our traditional food. We had a lot of sushi, uh, which I eat all the time when I'm back home anyway, which is, you know, raw fish, rice, this kind of thing. And uh, of course, steak. We found some good steak places, had a couple really good nice steakhouses and then a uh, bunch of Brazilian steakhouse one night and then of course we had our chicken and rice and you know our eggs and oatmeal and fruit and things like that for the breakfast. To me, dear to the Close your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, it's uh, when you travel it's always a challenge. Number one, usually the biggest challenge is getting in enough food and then when you're somewhere like China the challenge is finding the right type of food. And when you're not from there and you don't speak the language, and you know, there was a, without an interpreter, it's really hard to communicate in China because most of, the, most of the people don't speak English, especially the older people. You know, the younger generation, I think they, uh, most of them do speak English, but uh, of course, obviously we didn't speak Chinese, we didn't speak Mandarin, so without an interpreter, it was really hard to uh, communicate to get, get the things we needed. But uh, you know, where there's a will, there's a way. We figured it out and uh, made it happen. Yeah, we've been doing the expedition workouts uh, for a long time, over 18 years we've been doing it. Um, it is not necessarily saying that uh, we like it, but we understand uh, the purpose behind it. So you get this, you're looking at people, you know, they got their cameras up, stuff like that. It's a little bit irritating. Like I said, once we turn it on and time to work out, uh, everybody, it goes blank and nobody's around. You know, it's a, when you travel on your own tour, you gotta change your mindset a little bit. Um, you know, I do things, uh, I train at Metroflex because you can go there and you can train. And they encourage hardcore training. do and it's cool the harder you train the, you know the, the more it's accepted actually so when you're on the road yeah we still train you know me and Johnny still do our thing but it's never at this quite the same level as we would if we were back home you know we don't go as heavy we don't go quite as hard because you're on the road different equipment jet lag different food not enough food a whole bunch of different factors different machines uh, on top of that you usually have a massive crowd around you Man, we rode in the West Iron Gym here and um, had a good workout. So normally we just do chest and we had to do shoulders then because because of our travel schedule, we haven't been able to train every day like we normally would. So we had to train some shoulders to make up for the shoulder day we missed due to, due to travel and uh, had a good session, man. We had Gang jump in with us today, man, and uh, he's been rolling with us through the whole tour. So like Brand said, we walked in, kicked a little butt, 
Yang, we had to show him that there's no difference from Texas to China or any other country or state, wherever we in, no compromises. We do what we do. If you can't handle it, stand to the side and watch the rest of the way. Because like I said, it's easy to jump on. Woo! It's so hard to jump off. He just found that out. See you the next one. Yeah, Hangzhou, Hangzhou was beautiful, uh, but traffic was horrible. Uh, we stayed in the Shangri-La, which is a pretty famous a hotel. I know they in the lobby, they had pictures of all the world leaders that have been there, stayed there. It's been around for a long time. Um, beautiful hotel. And uh, right across, and there's a street in front of the hotel, and then there's a lake. It's a thousand-year-old man-made lake. And uh, a lot of history there. Had a bridge, you know, that had a lot of history behind it. And uh, I guess an ancient monk uh, monastery tower that was there. So uh, very beautiful, big, huge trees and very scenic. But uh, the traffic was horrendous. It's crazy. You thought, you know, traffic in uh, Texas was crazy. Um, but uh, <laughs> we don't have anything on China. You know, they probably needed a, a five lane highway and it was like one lane each way. So it was insane. But, uh, you know, we, they, we don't tour. We got to go out to the tea fields and uh, check out the tea fields where uh, they produce a lot of green tea, world famous green tea. So uh, we drove, a, it seemed like forever to have one glass of tea. And, uh, but we got some cool pictures and got to experience a lot of, uh, a lot of the local scenery and uh, see some of the historic sites. decided to become bodybuilders and thank God we you know we crossed over the line and became pros and had really great careers and now it's time for us to give back as much as we can um, to the guy up and coming guy you know and um, you know that's one thing that I always believe is if you give what you have inside it opens you up for other blessings to you know come to you <laughs> That's one of the benefits, you know, when you're doing these tours, 
yeah, you're working, you know, you're, you're doing the shoots in the gym and you're meeting and greeting and doing the seminars or whatever, but you also get to experience a lot of the local culture and uh, see things that you would never get to see, you know. It had been a long trip. Uh, 10 days is a fairly long time uh, to be away from your family, um, to be sick, you know, not feeling well and still have to perform, have, you know, m multiple, multiple people, you know, constantly in your face, want to take pictures and, you know, want a piece of you and want a part of you, you know, want to, you know, part of the experience uh, of the Gas Iron War Tours. <laughs> So uh, the last stop on our Iron World tour in China was Shenzhen. The group of guys we hung out with in Shenzhen was by far the best way to end the trip. These guys were super cool. Um, we went to Dagao Gym, had a great workout there, uh, and just had a really great experience. You know, uh, I think that, like I said, that it's all about who you're with. And uh, we, were, we had a really good experience everywhere we went on this trip, around some really good people, made some new friends in China. But uh, the guys at Dagao Gym and the, the crew we were hanging out with, and we had a lot of fun with these guys. And, uh, we were there, I think, we stayed there longer than we did anywhere else on the tour. Got to know these guys and hung out with them for about almost four days and uh, had a good time. We uh, had a kick-ass back workout and uh, did a meet and greet. And that was a, I couldn't think of a better way to end a trip than how we did it there with, uh, had a great dinner the last night. Everybody had a few drinks and had a few laughs and jumped on a plane and almost 24 hours later, we were back in Texas. Back to the gym, back at work. You know, back to kicking my dog and kissing my... No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> the poor dad.